One of the most surprising discoveries with this Paola trial is the activity or the lack thereof in the non-HRD patients. I, I have been hypnotized, uh, uh, really excited about adding uh, anti-VEGF and PARP inhibition in, in all comers. I was taught that if you have BRCA, then, well, the PARP inhibitor works. The real opportunity is in the non-BRCA patients. Mm -hmm. And we had this Joyce Liu of Olaparib Sidirinib, and then we had this Avanova, Niraparib, Bevacizumab, and it, it, it just didn't, yeah, the, sniff, didn't wow you. the sniff test, <laughs> exactly. it didn't pass the sniff <laughs> yeah. test because those endpoints, those endpoints were not placebo controlled. There was no independent radiology review. And so now and when there was we also no direct independency. We didn't pull out. Yeah, the so for example, in Avanova, there's no Bevacizumab arm. Right. Or in Joyce Lou's. Or, or in Joyce Lou's, there's no Sidirinib arm. So, so when we, I was so excited to see the HRD negative benefit of adding a lap rib or to Bevacizumab. Yeah. So what happened? <laughs> there's no difference. <laughs> there wasn't one. So How's I think that it's, possible? So I think, again, you're comparing to an active comparator. And in the HRD, if it's truly HRD negative, and I don't think we have the right assay just yet, yes. um, but if this is a truly representative HRD negative, you, may, you could say, I could use either, because I think the other studies support the I get use. It. You could but use never either, both. but there's no additive effect. So bevacizumab isn't dead. <laughs> but 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 it's fair to say it's an odd result because you don't. Not odd. You would at it's least consistent you would, with other people smarter than me. Uh, <laughs> what they thought. You, you would expect at least an additive effect, and you don't see. I it. would have, but I wasn't. Yeah. Right. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily expect synergism. So, I'd never buy that, but at least an additive effect of well, niraparib has three months in the upfront. So with is there Trima. any evidence? Why don't that, we see that when we add olaparib to Bev? Maybe niraparib is a better PARP inhibitor. Well, that's exactly what I think is going to be said, and I don't believe that. Sorry. But the other thing is that, and we brought this up earlier, or I think somebody I don't, did. I, yeah, I don't in think the, it's that different. In the platinum-sensitive space, where the best predictor of a PARP inhibitor is being platinum-sensitive. Yes. Right? So you can kind of predict that in Paula and Prima a little bit because they've responded. So at least you've excluded the patients who, who have progressed I, on yeah, the Exactly, so I think. But you so don't know who is going to make it to six or 12 months, and they may be, like these people may not ever have made it to Avanova. That's right. Like this that, may be exactly full right. of patients, 50% of right. these patients may this never is, have qualified. Yeah, that's right. And they're a totally different population yeah, than the HRD right. negative who are recur. still platinum sensitive. Yeah, this is, this is the reason this why when we do randomized control trials, we are able to control for confounders and we have no way to control for the confounders that you just brought up that could have explained these data. So that's really the key, and you've called for it. Why don't we do a PARP trial in the biomarker negative, whatever, however we pick a biomarker? I think it's a great idea. But, but, but you're not gonna be giving Bev, you wanna keep it going, it's tolerable, and the HRD comes back negative, you're not gonna go, oh, baby Paula was wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and have I'll a lab just for the yeah. heck of it. <laughs> right? It's not going to happen. No, I think there's still a lot of clinical equipoise in HRD negative. Yes. And I think everybody's going to understand that. We're going to have yeah. to guess for a while to do what's best for Which our patients. Which is half of the patients. But we're going to have right. to figure out the next Remember trial the, for these people. And, 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 and we'll I, put but, them on because we think, want them to do I better. I think we have those trials. Yeah. We have those trials, bevacizumab, yeah. tezolizumab. Yeah. We have them with the PARP, PARP inhibitors, inhibitors in the in I.O. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the real unmet medical need now is in the HRD negative space. So I, I actually think that our, the real unmet need is to understand who is HRD negative. Right. Not who really is. You, we talk, about, yeah, we talk about the assays as though they're binary. Yeah, yeah it's, it's true. It's not. Right. And okay. I think we need to get away from that because And, and you we, know, and, and, and where you see yes. that benefit yeah. in the so-called HRD, yeah. mind, it's with a cutoff of 42, and you know you're putting patients in there that actually have homologous recombination deficiency because they're between they're between 42 and 33. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. You're That's absolutely exactly right. What I'm talking about. Yeah. We need to define it better.